Okay, let's connect to your server with your FTP client. Say you installed CyberDuck on Mac. This will be similar on PC. Open it up. Now, if you didn't do this already, all these bookmarks that are by default there, I just delete them. They get in the way, they're confusing, and they clutter things up, and you don't need them. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to make a connection initially. You could do a quick connect up here, you can do open connection here, but I suggest the very first thing you do is create a bookmark. It'll be very similar to doing open connection using this. So go ahead and click this little button down in the bottom left, the plus, to add a connection. See, I just did that and it created it. I'm going to delete that and start over. Okay, so click this little plus, and here you've got a new connection bookmark. So go ahead and give it a nickname. I'm going to call this Lauren and Brenton because the website that I'm doing for this course is laurenandbrenton.com. Now your server, that's the name of your domain. Now there's a trick here. You can actually, since you're hosted on Shoutleaf servers, you could do shoutleaf.com. Whoops, shoutleaf.com. But It'll be more fun and easier to remember if you type in your name, your domain name. So type in your domain name here. Mine is laurenandbrenton.com. So note that I didn't put www in the front, and I especially didn't put HTTP in the front. This isn't hypertext transfer protocol, it's FTP. If you really wanted to, you could you see the URL up here. It says the FTP up there. You could do that, but just leave it like this, just the domain and and leave the port at 21 and then put the username so how do you know your username go to the email information that was given to you so here's the information I got sent myself an email so already I put in the domain now username here it is L and B so I'm gonna paste that in paste now I've op expanded this more options here because it's going to make things a lot simpler for you if you start with a default path of www and I'll show you why in a second but go ahead and put the default path of www the rest of it you can kind of leave alone okay so go ahead now and close that the password you'll you'll get in a minute so now I've got this here now you can open the bookmark and it'll ask you for the password. So I'm going to copy the password and paste it in. And I'm going to leave it to add to the keychain. Um, actually, it won't let me do that. But if yours is set up, you may be able to have this be remembered. Don't do anonymous login. So username is this. Password, I just pasted in from this. You'll note that the name server and the contact email don't come into play for this. So I'm going to say don't show this again and continue because I don't need this to be a secured FTP connection. So you see it's logging in, authenticating. All right, it's connected. So remember I told you to type in www for the starting path? That's because if you hadn't done that, you actually would have started in the root directory. So you can navigate within your directories either using this or with this. So I just went up to my root directory now by clicking this button. And so this is what you would have been presented with if you hadn't typed in that little www. So you've gone into this, you've loaded into this www folder, which is just like the folder where all the public web stuff is. It's actually an alias or a shortcut to public underscore HTML. It's the same thing. You'll notice they both have this CGI bin in there. If I open public HTML, I go to the same place as if I open www. These other ones are kind of stuff that you don't need to worry about. They take care of themselves for the most part. So I'm going to go back into, actually I'm going to go into www. And this CGI bin is something that is kind of a throwback. It's a little archaic. We don't need it, so I'm going to delete it. So that's how you delete a file in FTP. Now. How do you upload? Let's move this out of the way and 
open that hello.html file that I've got here. So this is the file I want to upload. It's in this web making folder on my desktop. And it's pretty simple. This is the location I'm dragging it into, which is going to correlate to laurenandbrenton.com slash, and then whatever I put in here will be directly there. This is basically the root of the domain. So that's a little confusing. This is, when I go up here, this is the root in the back end, but this is really the root, www. So I'm going to put this in there, and now it's going to upload. It's showing me the whole information that it took to upload, and it says resume, stop, all these different controls I have, and then when it's done, it tells me upload complete. And now I can see that the file is there. So this is on my local hard drive in this folder here, hello.html. Now this is hello.html on my website, my laurenandbrenton.com website. So let's actually go open a browser and check and see if we can find hello.html. Okay, here's Chrome. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my domain name, laurenandbrenton.com. So if I just go here without typing in that hello.html, it'll take you to an index. This won't always be visible, but right now it is. So I could just click on that to get to my hello.html, but I'm going to continue and type the entire thing. laurenandbrenton.com forward slash hello.html. Hit enter, and there's my document. This right here is this document. Now you want to see something interesting. Here it is on the internet. Let's open another tab, and let's open in this tab the same file, but from my hard drive. I'm going to drag it in. So you see the path here? This is the path to my hard drive on my Mac here. File, users, Brenton, desktop, webmaking101, hello.html. It's the same file as the one here on the internet on this tab, laurenandbrenton.com slash hello.html. So they're different URLs but the same file is located now in two places. Or actually, it would be more proper to say, this is a copy of this file. So here's something that's important to understand. If I edit this file on my hard drive, it will not update on the internet until I upload it again. So let's go ahead and do that. Open with text edit. Now here's my file. I put a little HTML, but I'm gonna say hello. This is a local change. And save. So I've just made a change to this file. Now, if I go to my browser, after having all I have to do is save this, go to my browser and go to the local tab and reload. And you see, hello, this is a local change. Now, without doing anything else, laurenandbrenton.com, refresh, no change made. Why? Because I only changed it on my hard drive. If I want to see the change here on the internet, I'm going to have to drag this file to replace that file on the internet through FTP again. So it's going to upload again. It's going to ask me, do you want to overwrite? And I click, yes, I do want to overwrite. And now it's uploaded again, and it's made another copy that's overwritten the old copy. So now this one is updated. So let's go back to the window and refresh laurenandbrenton.com hello.html. And now the local change has appeared online.